Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we will go through step nine of the SAP UI5 walkthrough series, and we will discuss about component configuration. Up till now, we understand about model view controller concept. We understand that model is something which holds data on the UI application side. Views are responsible for rendering the UI to the user. And controller is something which holds the application logic uh, for our UI application. Now coming to components, SAP UI5 provides components as independent and reusable parts of UI5 applications. All right. They facilitate the encapsulation of closely related parts of an application, thus enabling developers to structure and maintain their applications more easily. Basically, the concept of components is to provide independent and reusable parts, which can be used across multiple SAP UI5 applications. If you see here, Components are independent and reusable parts used in SAP UI5 applications. An application can use components from different locations from where the application is running. Thus, components can be developed by different development teams and be used in different projects. Basically, components are independent and reusable parts which can be used across different SAP UI5 applications and therefore they can be developed independently by different teams as well. Components also support the encapsulation of closely related parts of an application into a particular component. Say for example, you have a big SAP UI5 application. You can, you can divide or split one SAP UI5 applications into multiple components and you can develop those components independently of each other. This makes the structure of an application and its code easier to understand and to maintain. So this is the primary objective and advantage of using components. Now there are two types of components provided by SAP UI5. Number one is faceless components. Faceless components, they do not have a user interface and are only used for coding purpose where no UI elements are involved. The other type of components are UI components. UI components basically adds rendering functionality to the component and they represent a screen area or element on the user interface. For example, a button or a shell along with the respective settings and metadata. These are the two types of components which we can use in SAP UI5. Now coming to the structure of a component, a component is basically organized in a unique namespace and the namespace of the component itself becomes the component name. The component consists of a component controller file, which is a component.js file. We will introduce this file in our application now, and it can also contain a descriptor file called a manifest.json file. The component.js file is a mandatory file for a component. Whereas the manifest.json or the description or the descriptor file is optional, but it is highly recommended to have a descriptor file. If we see in the following figure, it gives an example of a component folder structure. You can see our component, it basically has the controller files, it has the CSS files, it has I18N files, it has a script file, it has the view files. And then it has a component.js file, which is our component controller. And it has a descriptor file, which is a manifest.json file. So this entire folder structure is our component folder structure. Now coming to the component.js file, which we have in our application. Here we can see that, first of all, what we are doing using the sap.ui.define module, we are loading this dependency for SAP slash UI slash core slash UI component. Basically, we'll be creating our component using this UI component base class. Once, the, once all these dependencies are loaded in our uh, component file, what we have to do is that we have to extend our UI component base class. So we use this return UI component dot extend method and when we are extending this UI component class, we have to pass the name of our component. Now we know the name of our component 
is the same as the namespace of our application. Therefore, sap.ui.demo.walkthrough is the namespace of our application and this remains same here. And we have to pass dot component after that. Basically, this is the name of our component. Now, once we have extended this UI component class with our component name, then we provide the metadata of our component here. In the metadata of our component, we are providing a parameter called interfaces and we provide a value sap.ui.core.iAsyncContentCreation. What this does is it makes the component creation process fully asynchronous. Then in the next parameter root view, we provide the root view name of our application. So you can see here, Again, sap.ui.demo.walkthrough. This is the namespace of our application. Then dot view, which points to the view folder. And then we have our view name. So here we are providing the name of our root view in the metadata. So this is the metadata configuration for our component. After that, we have the init function of our component. The init function of our component file is automatically invoked whenever our component is instantiated. Inside this init function, we have to make this mandatory call to the init function of the base class. So we know UI component is our base class from which we are inheriting in our component file. And it therefore it is obligatory to call the init function of the base class in our init function of the component. We also set the OData model and the I18 models on our component instead of setting them on our root view. Now, because our root view we have already mentioned here as our app view.xml file, now this view will be managed by our component and it need not to be invoked from our index.js file. Now, because our root view is managed within our component, Therefore, when we have set our JSON model and our I18N model on our component, they will automatically be available in our root view. Basically, these two models will be inherited from the component to our root view. Now coming to the changes in the app.controller.js file, we see that the onInit function is no more needed here because uh, whatever code changes were there in the on init of the app controller, now all that has been moved to our component.js file init function. In the index.js file, we can see that now we are instantiating a component container instead of creating a view here, what we were doing in the previous step. Now we only instantiate the component container and pass the namespace in the name parameter, what this will do is it will basically instantiate our component and our component is responsible for managing our root view. One thing to note here is that in this step, we have the metadata of our component mentioned in our component.js file itself. But as we move on further down in the walkthrough series, we will see that this metadata will basically move to a separate descriptor file, which will, which is the manifest.json file. And that is the recommended way of doing it. Now we will run the application and uh, see the code in action. In order to run the application locally, I have already introduced a dummy manifest.json file. I have already made some change, the required changes in the ui5.yml file. Now I'll run the UI5 surf command. We can see that there are no changes on the in the application from the look and feel point of view. But the important thing here is that we have introduced the concept of component from now onwards in our SAP UI5 application. So this is what I wanted to cover in this video. 
uh, a very important concept of component and uh, how do we configure comp component for our SAP UI5 applications. In the next video, we will go through step 10 for the SAP UI5 walkthrough series. Until then, uh, thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.